Lumbar spinal stenosis is one of the diagnoses which is most commonly seen by most neurosurgeons, and I see many, many patients with lumbar spinal stenosis. It's one of the most common problems we see, probably the most common problem we treat surgically and non-surgically in anyone over the age of 55, but it can happen younger in the 30s and as late into the 80s and 90s. As we live much longer now, and our children will probably live to be 90 or 100, uh, with these aging spines, how do we preserve motion? My philosophy is that uh, we are basically in business to try to help and treat the patients. So first thing, the most important thing is what are the symptoms that we're trying to treat? Some patients just have straightforward leg pain and claudication symptoms, but there's a large sub uh, set of patients as well that have significant back pain in addition uh, to their spinal stenosis. So not only do they have the leg symptoms, but they have a great deal of debilitating back pain uh, related to facet disease or uh, a stable spondylolisthesis. Often stenosis of the spine in the lumbar region is associated with arthropathy of the facet joints. And some patients might be a candidate for instrumentation because the facets are arthritic and are contributing to the stenosis. Generally, we tend to be conservative if that's possible. Traditionally, we'd have options uh, for treating lumbar stenosis involving decompression alone and then stabilizing after decompression, which is to say performing surgeries to remove bone and, and decompress the stenosis and the narrowing to help the leg pain, but those patients could often fail or persist to have back pain or develop persistent degenerative changes as time goes by. So an alternative or an option beyond decompression alone was to perform a fusion or a fixation procedure. With those two options, while they're appropriate for a lot of patients, we were missing an option, a third option, and that option is effectively decompressing the patient, but also obtaining stabilization after decompression. Stabilization can involve surgical fixation or fusion, which is the more traditional way, but now we have newer options like Coflex. There are other devices that supposedly treat spinal stenosis in a somewhat reversible way, but Coflex is completely different. So it's not only is it allowing you to do a really broad decompression and know that you've decompressed the nerve roots, it then gives you the opportunity to open up the foramen by actually lifting the facet joints, and then it stabilizes but does not eliminate motion. So all of that leads to a better recapitulation of the normal architecture and motion of the spine, which you don't get it with a fusion. With neurosurgery, there are uh, new technology that comes along very frequently, and there's always a better mousetrap, so to speak. In terms of evaluating it, I look at the clinical data, uh, look at the biomechanics of it, and see if it makes sense for patients and whether they would benefit from that type of procedure. Uh, first, you want to really familiarize yourself with the literature that supports that technology. Uh, secondly, you want to see if it really fits the patient population that you deal with. Because if you're going to bring in a new technology but you don't deal with those type of patients and you're going to have to start looking for them, that, is, uh, that pushes the model a little too far. And thirdly is uh, my comfort level in actually taking on that new technology. If I think I have to push my own technical envelope to a dangerous degree, I may not adopt it. So it has to fit those three criteria for me. Good literature support, it fits the patient population with whom I deal with, and then lastly, my own personal comfort with uh, taking that technology on. So as spine surgeons, in general as medical doctors, we're um, faced with a number of different new technologies that come in and uh, it's, it's difficult to um, streamline that and, and figure out what works and what, what doesn't. Coflex was brought through an FDA process, which is a very vigorous process that has data, what we call level one data, which is randomized controlled study. It's the highest level of medical evidence we have. We now can go to our patients and know who we should be using the Coflex for. We can talk to our patients with confidence about the data behind the device, the results they can expect, and almost as important is we can actually go to payers and have them approve the surgery, which is a very challenging thing in today's healthcare environment. We as physicians might have the best intentions in mind for our patients, but convincing the insurance companies and the payers that we're doing the right thing has become a whole other issue. I'm always looking at ways uh, that I can uh, add on to the basic foundations of uh, you know, the surgical techniques that I'm very familiar with and comfortable with. 
and uh, with the excellent um, uh, results that have been published with uh, the CoFlex device uh, and with the relative uh, you know, simplicity of you know, adapting some, uh, learning some newer simple techniques to uh, implant uh, CoFlex, uh, it's been relatively an easy thing to adjust to. Well, I started using CoFlex once I saw uh, the results of other surgeons and the way the device is utilized and how it is applied to spinal stenosis. In particular, I've used it in cases of spondylolisthesis when two bones are malaligned in the spine and you have spinal stenosis from that. I, I have found that my patients who I've operated on with spondylolisthesis that is, has little to no movement but has significant stenosis, those patients, when I've applied CoFlex, have done much better than before using CoFlex. I would often take those patients and either do a smaller operation for fear of destabilizing them or have to do a larger operation and put pedicle screws in. And the use of CoFlex has made a, a large extensive operation into a shorter operation for the patient and I have much better outcomes and more pain relief. When we are introducing CoFlex to new doctors or patients, it's a device that seems similar to other things we may have seen in the past. Devices that can be used for fusion in that space, devices that uh, depend on an indirect decompression or creating an artificial decompression by leveraging the spine against itself. And the CoFlex is totally different than that. In those types of devices that are creating an indirect decompression, if there's a small fracture or if the device fails, you've lost your operation, you've lost the benefit. With CoFlex, the primary purpose of the operation is to decompress the nerve, which we're accomplishing. With the CoFlex being put in after that, we're getting added benefit. It's an adjunct to our simple decompression. So the worst case scenario is the patient doesn't get that added benefit. The best case scenario is their back pain's better, they have less surgical uh, recurrence, they have less problems in the future needing treatment. So that's a very good thing as a surgeon to know that I have a procedure that I can offer with very little downside to it. Sometimes I call it an insurance policy to the patient. What we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, improve the surgery we're already doing and then increase the longevity of it, the durability, if you will. Patients in general seem to have done very well uh, in my experience. One patient actually who uh, our procedure was somewhat delayed because he had an infection, so he really was looking forward to the procedure. And he's typically somebody I would have considered for a decompression of fusion, although he didn't have instability in the area but had significant amount of back pain and very uh, major facet uh, problems. And we finally got to do the CoFlex and ended up being an outpatient procedure for him. He left and um, on his first op post-operative day, he was completely um, off his pain medications. And to this date, which is over a year later, he's very happy with the results. And um, indeed, he has sent me several patients who come ask for CoFlex, although they may have problems with their neck or somewhere else. <laughs> In every single patient, that I have used CoFlex on. I have been impressed not only with the fact that I resolved their leg symptoms, but how impressive uh, this device is in eliminating their back pain. And that probably has been the most impressive component. Uh, number one, you're not having to make a big incision, so that already makes it easier for the patient to recuperate. But the more impressive aspect of it is these patients that have been not only impaired by the leg symptoms from the stenosis, but impaired by the significant back pain of these severe facet disease, and how suddenly, within a matter of weeks after the back pain from the surgery has faded, their back pain goes away. And that, to me, has been dramatic enough that I've become a, a pretty st uh, strong advocate of the, of the procedure. I'm actually thinking of that procedure for myself, since I happen to know I have foraminal stenosis and facet disease, and uh, while I'm not at the point that I think I'm going to be jumping into the surgical frying pan, uh, I am uh, thinking that that's what I would like to have done for myself. So with CoFlex going through the FDA trial, we know who's the patient to put it in. We can expect outcomes associated with that. And we have the data to show the payers that what we're doing is actually helping patients at a cost value, uh, and with a cost value model. So the impact on me personally is I, I, don't, I don't see as many patients asking for narcotics. I don't have the same problems with follow-up with fusion. 
you know, you have to make sure is the fu has the fusion laid down? Do you have a failed fusion? Is there pseudoarthrosis? So you don't worry about any of that. Um, you don't worry about the narcotic use, as I've already mentioned. But for me, the biggest advantage is it gives me another option to offer a patient, which I really didn't have. Well, when I see my patients and, uh, for, who are coming in and asking questions about fusion and they've been told they may need a fusion, I often find that a lot aren't aware of this device. And so I've spent time describing it and describing a faster recovery to them versus the three month for the fusion to really return to a full normal activity to really be getting at three to four weeks a very aggressive exercise uh, program in restoration of their function and returning to their normal lifestyle. So I would say that uh, my personal use of the product in the, my practice has been very beneficial in that regard. So with, re with regards to the Coflex, I believe that uh, oftentimes when you decompress a patient, so if you come in with leg pain and um, some degree of back pain, uh, but again, not for everybody, um, <coughs> Coflex adds to uh, the decompression to maintain that so that you don't have to return back for decompressing later on or perhaps uh, the next step, which would be a fusion. Uh, I think it's been a good augment in that perspective for our patients.